Welcome to the Airmere Roundtable. Today is the 14th of November, 2019. So welcome, everyone. And uh, have a special guest, uh, John Locke. Now, John, you and I go back uh, a long time. I, I forget what year we first met, but it was many moons ago. Uh, probably around 2006. So that's when I started really getting into trading. So. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's been, what, 13 years or so. So always a pleasure to, uh, to talk and um, get back together. And, and uh, now we get to hear about the X4. So... I'm going to mute myself just in case there's any background noises I don't want to interrupt, but, um, you know, take it away and, uh, and welcome, welcome back. Great. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask them. I think Tom can probably monitor them. So you're here to talk about the X4 advanced uh, options training program that uh, we have going on. And before we do, we just let you know that you know, we're not broker deals or financial advisors, not making any specific trading recommendations. Also, please be aware that your risk and trading options is substantial and make sure you are risk aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. And note that anything we show today are going to be hypothetical computers, simulated trades, and their results, unless they're, other, they're specifically stated otherwise. And uh, keep in mind that live results can vary from simulated results for many different uh, reasons. So... For those of you who may not be familiar with me, my name is John Locke. I have a company called Locking Your Success uh, LLC. We train people how to become traders and how to perform better in life as well. Like I said, I'm a trading and success coach. We run several websites. One of them is LockingYourSuccess.com. Another one is TheWinningTrade.com. And then we have TradingPerformancePodcast.com. We actually have FinancialFreedomClassroom.com as well. So we have a lot of different things going on related to finances. Just some very free resources that are available to you is we have free examples of creating success through powerful, robust income strategies that are doing well at TheWinningTrade.com. We have uh, at the TradingPerformancePodcast.com, we have free training on the most important aspects of success in any part of life, including trading. And we talk about psychology, mindset, and processes to be successful. And, of course, LockingYourSuccess.com, that's our main site that includes our free group forums and information on our memberships and programs and free coaching opportunities, things like that. So that's what we have going on there. Now, let's talk a little bit about the X4, but before we get too involved with the aspects of the X4 program itself, you know, I'd like to talk a bit about becoming a great income trader in general and about the way we approach trading with our education at LockingYourSuccess.com. So we want to do that so that we can, when we get into the X4 trading strategies themselves, that we can have a better grasp on their context and their purpose. And some of you may know me from the past. And if you do, you probably know me because I have developed multiple trading strategies on the Russell that have become extremely popular over the years. And those strategies are you know, the M3, the bearish butterfly, and the rock is probably what we're most known for. What you may not know is that none of these strategies were ever intended to be used as standalone trades where a trader comes in and blindly puts on a position month after month, hoping and praying that it works out. This is unfortunately what we see with most aspiring income traders. That's what they're trying to do. Now, that said, I do believe there can be tremendous educational value in putting on the same trade month after month and observing it and seeing how it works out and learning from it and so forth. And I might even go as far as to say it's a necessary stage in a successful trader's development, and most traders have probably gone through that type of thing at some point in their career on their path to becoming successful. However, they certainly didn't get stuck there. Successful traders are not like the majority of traders who stay, who stay stuck in this unproductive cycle of trying to trade after trade, clinging on to the notion that they can create consistency by ignoring market conditions and applying the same set of rigid rules in drastically different situations. And if you think about it, I would never expect in any part of life that applying the exact same process to very different circumstances is going to produce the same or a consistent result every time it's applied. I mean, if I was a doctor and every time a person came in with a problem, you know, I prescribed the same medication no matter what the situation was, no matter if they had a sore throat, a broken arm, a wart, you know, a stick in the eye, if I gave the exact same treatment no matter what, if I did that, then you know, I might cure some people some of the time, but how consistent are my results going to be? If I was an attorney, and every time I had a case, I made the exact same argument, regardless of the situation, I might win some cases some of the time, but how consistent would I be? Right? If I was an automotive mechanic or a technician, and regardless of what I was trying to fix, I always smacked it with a hammer. You know, Again, I might fix some problems, but how consistent are my results going to be? And as a trader, if I use the same methodology 
if I'm using the same trading strategy regardless of the context of the market, then I'm going to win some trades, and I might even win a lot of trades for a period of time, but I can't expect consistent results using that type of an approach. Now, this doesn't mean we can't make money trading the same strategy every month, month after month over the long term. But if that's my only approach, you know, I certainly wouldn't expect the results to be what most traders would call consistent. Realize that there's a huge difference between a person who trades and a trader. You know, a person who trades is afraid of being wrong. And as a result, they're going to do things like desperately seek out these holy grail trading strategies. They're going to tend to avoid making their own decisions and blindly follow rules or other people. They're going to focus on short-term results and strategy hop while desperately hoping things that, work, that things are going to work out. And a trader is going to be very different than that. A trader is going to be free, freely willing to take the risk of being wrong and make his own decisions. He's going to let go of the need for short-term results for validation that he's doing well. Right? And he's going to start focusing on uh, creating long-term success. He's going to seek to understand the strengths and the weaknesses of various strategies to understand the market and then to use that information to make fully informed probability and risk-reward decisions and use that information to various approach by utilizing the appropriate strategies at the most appropriate times to achieve the most consistent results as we, they go through time. And this is what the X4 program is all about. It's about helping a person who trades become a consistently profitable trader. Now, the X4 is an advanced multi-phase index options training series designed to drastically improve the live trading skills of people who have previous experience live trading condor and broken wing butterfly types of positions. So in order to accomplish this in the program, we've broken it down into four phases. So phase one, is all about the trades. In this phase, we created three very robust rule-based strategies on the SPX that perform well across a very wide variety of markets, but perform best in three different types of market environments. And you know, realistically, these trades are very good, and a person who trades could certainly utilize any one of these strategies and do well as a trader or as a person who trades over time but realize that learning a trade, including these trades in itself, is not our end goal. But we want to think of it as a stepping stone. Our real goal is to fully understand the trades and then move on to much more important topics so that we can develop into consistently profitable traders. So during phase one, we thoroughly explain the mechanics of the trades as well as the environments they're tuned to. Well, at the same time, we're gonna cover the proper backtesting practices, alternate outcomes, gray areas, subjectivity, things like that in order to understand how to properly interpret backtest results in a way where you'll have a good understanding on what to expect when you transition into live trading in phase two. We begin diving into topics that are much more important than trade rules when it comes to your success as a trader, topics that apply universally across all types of trades to all types of traders. We discuss uh, things like why income trading works, what implied volatility is, why it matters, techniques on predicting implied volatility changes. We explain technical analysis and news and their effect on implied volatility, how implied volatility scenarios affect the reliability of your analytical software, which is extremely important, uh, as well as the Greeks on your analytical platform, what they really mean. Right? We all have an idea what the Greeks mean, but not many people can uh, really understand what the Greeks' numbers on the analytical platforms are actually telling them. And we do this to give you a deep understanding on your position, a deep understanding of the market, and an understanding of your analytical software and how things are going to react despite what your analytical software tells you so that we can make much better decisions than we could ever do uh, by simply following uh, trade rules. So in phase three, we shift our focus to subjectivity and adaptation based on what we've learned about positions, about technical analysis, implied volatility, and modeling deficiencies. We discuss trade execution and market timing, entry and exit and adjustment timing, alternative hedging structures, dynamic hedging, benefits and dangers of both traditional and alternative hedging structures. And then lastly, we put this all together and we learn to apply what we've learned to real live trading. This training itself, it's uh, it's over uh, 20 hours long. We've had over 20 webinars on it. It's by far the most complete program on the, the mechanics for becoming consistently profitable as an income trader that you're going to find anywhere. So that's about 
the program. So I just want to keep that in mind so that when we take a look at the trades, you can just kind of keep things in context. So I set up three examples. I ha uh, well, actually, before I even do that, let's just talk about the trades in general. So the the, the X4 consists of three uh, base structures, I call them, or base trading strategies. We have something called a V14, and this is what I call the jack of all trades. It's a neutral, a very market neutral trading position. It, uh, it has the highest long-term win rate, has the lowest average drawdowns, uh, minimal management, it's resistant to most resistance to losses and up-down reversals, and those are the, the highlights. And the maybe the downfall of the strategy is it has the lowest long-term returns on planned capital of the three positions. So I want you to notice something here, and, because this is a dynamic within all trading strategies. Strategies that have the highest long-term win rates and the lowest drawdowns will also return the lowest long-term returns on your planned capital numbers. That's a dynamic within trading, and it always works that way. It always works that way. Um, the V17 is a different strategy that we have. It's also a broken wing butterfly style trade, and it's designed to perform best in low uh, uptrending, low implied volatility uh, markets. It's virtually impossible to lose in, with an up move. It's virtually impossible to lose with sustained up moves. It uh, does well in most down-up reversal whipsaws. It has an extremely high historic rate of winning. It's had winning streaks of up to three years historically, and it has a significantly higher long-term yield than that our neutral version 14 trade. And the bad side of it is it tends to lose in streaks. So when it loses, it often doesn't lose one trade. It'll lose two, three, four, sometimes five, six trades in a row. And this, again, is another dynamic that you're going to see with trading strategy, and it's universal across all types of trading strategies. Strategies that have really long winning streaks will eventually come into a fairly long losing streak. Um, this strategy as compared to, say, the 14, which is more neutral, is going to be more streaky. In other words, the 14 might have a loss here and there and generally do well with low returns. The 17 is going to have these periods of time for years sometimes where it's doing fantastically well, and then it's going to have a period of time where maybe it's not doing so well. Um, that's just kind of characteristics. With this, it has a slightly lower win rate than a 14, and the lower win rate, it does allow us to get a higher yield. And then we have another strategy called a version 22 that's designed to form best in neutral to slightly bearish and very high implied volatility situations. Right? Again, another long-term uh, trade that performs extremely well over the long term as the other two trades do. This trade has the highest long-term results on playing capital of any of the three strategies. It's extremely resilient to very wide ranges of market chop. It generally does well in market crash type of situations. It does also allow some subjectivity within the guidelines. Now, the downside to this trade is that we start to get much more management intensive than the other strategies. It also has the most variable results. So it's going to have like the lowest long-term win rate of the three positions, and it's going to have these really good months, and it's going to have you know periods of bad times more regularly. But it also has the highest long-term returns. This is another dynamic that you're going to see within income trading, pretty much no matter what you do. Okay. And these are good things to learn as you're going through the trading process. So rather than trying to create the perfect trade here. What we're doing is we're giving us trades that are specifically designed for situations and teaching you the difference between them and when to use them and when not to use them. So those are the three trades. The examples I have here are I just threw together three examples. Um, the V14, which is the neutral trade, we'll take a look at for August, which may not look, look all that neutral for August, but we'll um, I'll kind of explain that. So let me pull up our software here. So here is a version 14 trading strategy. So I'm just going to show the strikes here. This is a trading strategy that I put together for very neutral market conditions. And we always start this strategy with a 60-40 broken wing butterfly. 
Uh, well, actually, we don't always start it with a 60-40 Broken Wing Butterfly. It's going to depend on the implied volatility. But generally, we're going to start as a 60-40 bro Broken Wing Butterfly. And if you've been trading for a while and you've been trading 60-40 Broken Wing Butterflies, you realize that sometimes when you put a position on, you have very negative delta. Sometimes when you put a position on, you have very positive delta. <laughs> right? That all has to do with the implied volatility skew in the marketplace at the time. And... You know, in 2019, we happen to be in an environment where implied volatility skew is extremely flat or sometimes even frown-shaped. Uh, and that gives us, if we put a 60-40 broken wing butterfly on it, it gives us a situation where we have excessively high delta and basically no risk to the upside, almost like a bullish vertical position. So if this was a very low environment and we take on a certain amount of negative delta, we may be going with smaller wings. But... In this environment, we're going to be 60-40. That's as wide as we'll go in this strategy. And then after we enter the position, we're going to cut this down to uh, to about uh, or under. We want to make sure that if our positive delta basically is under 9 in these positions. And again, this is for a 10 lot. Now, a position like this is a 10 lot. It's going to have a $22,500 uh, plan capital or maximum capital we're going to allow in the position. And... It's going to um, have a profit target that, well, I'll put it this way, a maximum loss of, of $2,500, which is about 11%. It's going to have a profit target uh, of $2,500 in this configuration. If we have to cut this configuration, in other words, the adjustment strategy in, in this trade cuts our wing sizes down. When we cut our wing sizes down, we also reduce our profit target. So we have a $2,500 profit target, $1,500 profit target, $750 profit target, depending on uh, our wing width. And again, our wing width is going to be dependent on, very dependent on what implied volatility does through the process. So this is a, a fairly simple trade. Uh, for down adjustments, we're essentially, we, sometimes we move the put around if our, if our risk comes too high. But if we get down below the short strike, we're rolling it back. If we get um, too far above the tent and we're positive delta, we're rolling it up. If we get too far above the tent and we're negative delta, we are rolling back upper longs. So we have a different adjustment strategy depending on if we're pulling positive or negative delta. And basically what's going to determine whether or not we pull positive or negative delta is going to be the implied volatility underneath the marketplace. So here we are... Um, and this is going to go very quickly because there's not many adjustments here. But here is going to be our starting position. And like I said, we're not always positive delta. Sometimes we're usually more neutral. But given the implied volatility, this is uh, this is what end up, ends up happening. So I'm going to just – I didn't even write down what our adjustments are, but I'm just going to go over the next adjustment. So notice it's May 31st. I uh, also want to note um, – we start these 77 days to expiration. You can use weeklies. You can do whatever. But um, we start them 77 days to expiration. We get out when the cycle two months down the road is 77 days to expiration. So it's a far from expiration, longer term trade. And since we're in August, we're looking at the October Positions when there's 77 days to expiration, which is in this case is going to be a little less than uh, six, about 63 days. Uh, when that happens, we're going to be exiting this trade regardless, assuming we don't hit our profit target first, or our or our maximum loss first. So that's basically how this strategy works. So this year, May 31st, you know, this is how active this is. Uh, we do nothing until June 20th. So almost a whole month goes by. And what happened during that time from a price chart standpoint, let's see, we were, May, uh, we, were 30, we were the 31st here, is basically the market went straight up. So uh, we really didn't do anything. Now, one of the things that happens with this is if we go a certain point uh, above the market and – uh, we have the uh, ability to roll it up. So here, we can do that. So we're going to take this and roll the position up to where it was. We're essentially going back to starting position. So we come in, we take a look at our 60-40 broken wing butterfly. We see our delta is too high. We move the put 
to where it needs to be. So it's just a complete close and a reopen. Okay, let's move forward. If we go to our next adjustment, this actually closes a trade. So let me uncheck the adjustment. So what happens here is the market went up. Our long strike is at 29.60. And one of the rules within the rule set basically says that if you're 30 points over your long strike and your negative delta, more than minus one delta, which we are here, then what we're going to do is we're going to roll in the wings. So we're going to make this adjustment here. And this would be our new position. However, we also reduce our profit target. So initially we start out with a profit target of $2,500. When we go to a 50-30 wing, our profit target gets dropped down to $1,500. And since our profit and loss is already at uh, over $1,900, then what's going to happen is we are going to exit this trade. And the reason we're exiting at 1230 is because July 3rd, it's a half a day. So that's it. We come in here, we close the trade, and then uh, we move on. If we go into the next strategy, and notice we have a lot of variations of X4. Um, there are a lot of different trading strategies that we worked with prior to, come to finalizing on these three. So we're looking at a September version 22. This is going to be started. Let me go to next adjustment. <clears throat> And this is 77 days for August. That's our August setup. Let's do September. It's going to be another month out. September is going to be here. Probably July 5th, right? All right. Okay. So let's go into our September version 22. So this is a version 22. For those of you who know M3, it kind of looks like an M3 strategy. It's sort of a variation, uh, one of the variations of the M3 that we've been trading for, for many years, where we alter our wing widths and things like that. So this is going to start out as a symmetrical butterfly, well, usually symmetrical uh, butterfly, that is about 17, 27 points behind the market. So uh, so around 20 points behind the market. Our wing widths are going to vary depending on what the implied volatility structure is telling us. And uh, we're going to be doing calls. So this could have anywhere from, say, 50-point wings to 100-point wings. And in low volatility, is going to be more narrow. In higher volatility, is going to be wider. We have a planned capital of $35,000. We have a maximum loss of $2,500. We do not have a profit target. There's no profit target on this strategy. When we made these strategies, we made them different in multiple ways. And this is so that the trader can really understand what the difference is between adding a profit target, uh, not having a profit target, and having different types of profit targets relative to what your maximum loss number is. And all the strategies are different in that respect, except for the maximum losses, they're all the same, they're all 2,500. But this is uh, this strategy here, and uh, those are the guidelines. As far as profit expectations, I mean, generally we are in the 10% range, but we go as high as 30% sometimes, and of course, you know, we always have uh, those times we make less or uh, sometimes have losses. So here we enter the the market at zero delta. This strategy shows or is going to react quite differently than our standard broken wing butterfly does. You'll notice to the downside, it generally reacts quite well. You know, where most broken wing butterflies are going to get stopped out to the downside, usually this survives that move. Keep in mind our maximum loss on this is relatively low. It's only like 7.1%, which means when we are wide like this or when we are in certain types of environments, we can hit our max loss easy through volatility if depending on how you're positioned. So you know, it also addresses that and, and talks about that within the program. Here is what our starting position is going to look like. We have the same 
characteristics for reversing this. This is sometimes put protected depending on, in other words, we allow a certain amount of loss to the downside uh, with a 100 point move in the SPX. And if we hit, uh, if we exceed that number, we start to put protect it. So there is sometimes for protection on this. There's sometimes not. Same thing with the version 14. In this type of implied volatility environment, generally we're not going to have the protection. It's generally not necessary. We can handle a really big move most of the time uh, without exceeding our numbers. So that's typically not an issue. We to the upside. We have delta limits as far as, you know, we're allowing like minus 25 delta inside the tent, minus 15 outside the tent. We have, like the M3, we have uh, a, a Vega number that we are uh, monitoring. And if it goes positive, then we generally don't want to deal with that. And uh, this is basically how it goes. So let's just kind of go through this one. This one's more interesting because... I think this is this was the market crash. Okay, so nothing happened that day. Oh no, I, I think that was on the version 17. So let me just see what, uh, what goes on here. All right, no, so the market's not moving. So let me just go to adjustment. So it's July 5th, I think we were entered. It's July 9th here. Let's just go to August 1st. So this position went to August 1st and we end up pulling back down uh, underneath the short strikes. So that being the case, we do a rollback. When we do a rollback, we may widen or shorten the width of our wings. <clears throat> we may also use the, uh, move the call depending on how much this butterfly costs at the current width it's in. So here, we're going to do a rollback. And basically going back to starting position, keeping relatively flat delta, and going back 20, about 20 points behind the market. We'll just say about 20 points. It's really 17 and 27. So about 17 points behind the market. And if I go to uh, next adjustment here, that's the first. This is the second, right? Notice how active we're becoming. And this isn't always active, but certainly when the market's moving around, it is active. Uh, we pulled back again another 22 points in the SPX. So that being the case, we are back below our short strikes again. And we're going to kick this back again to 20 points behind the market. So you can see the move there. We move back into uh, the 1910 range. If we go to next adjustment, Monday, August 5th. Ah, so here's the, here's the market did happen here. So here's, uh, here's what happened. Right, so we go from the second, and on the second we made to the rollback, which is a Friday, into this position here. So we roll back 20 points. This is what our T plus zero line looks like to the downside. Notice how the T plus zero line reacts in this position. If you've been, if you were in this position in a broken wing butterfly, for example, and you remember it you probably got hammered pretty hard with the downside with a 90 point move coming up in the SPX. This trade here, it just takes out like nothing. So again, that's just with the characteristics. So if we go to the next day without an adjustment, right, we got a 90 point move in the SPX, we get pushed all the way back underneath the butterfly position, but it really doesn't bother it. This is one of the characteristics of this type of trade um, that's that's beneficial over broken wing butterfly. Now, broken wing butterfly has its own advantages, but um, this is one of the advantages of this this type. So anyway, here we're going to take this and uh, do a rollback and do the same thing, right? We, we go 17 to 27 points behind the market. We are it's like we're about 80 points at this point, 80 points wide, and the position is fine. So let's go. To the following day, I think we probably have a lot of action here. Get a bit of a bounce. And now we get up into this area of the butterfly. Now, whether we make an adjustment here or not, again, is going to depend mainly on the vol implied volatility structure in the market. What we're looking for is we want to maintain our negative vega. We also don't want too much negative delta. 
delta is not a problem here. We're at minus 1.55, but our vega is, right? And the problem that we like with implied volatility is when we have a positive vega number, that tells us that most of our support on our t plus zero line when we get outside the tent, most of it's determined or most of that support, we're depending on the value in long options to hold this t plus zero line from collapsing. And in certain environments, we can be way outside the tent and there's really no issue with that because we're strongly negative vega, which is basically saying we don't have much value in our longs and we have a lot of value in our shorts. And if implied volatility drops with an up market, which it often does, a lot of times you know, the value is going to come out of those shorts. The T plus show line is going to be generally stable. We can also make use that as predictions on broken wing butterflies with the amount of vega that we have to try to determine if our T plus zero is going to pop or if it's going to sag or what it's going to do when, uh, when the market moves. But here we're looking at this. So we try to correct that. And you know we can try to correct that by moving options back. You know, when, you, when you do this, most of the time, you're going to have a vega change. Here, we're not, which is, again, telling us something about the implied volatility skew under the market. We should be getting a change in vega, but we are not. Right? It's just nothing there. Now I could take this and try these options. Right now our vega is coming down and I can continually get more and more narrow on the upside of the butterfly. This of course puts more capital in the position and, it, and eventually if I go wide enough, uh, what's gonna happen is generally I'm going to eventually get negative vega, which I do, but then I have too much money in the position so that being the case, I have to move these to bring the money back out. And that's going to bring me more positive vega. You see, you see the dynamic and the balance going on? So we have that situation happening. So in this case here, I'm going to try to correct it this way. Uh, and I'm going to try and correct it till I get to a certain delta. Once I exceed a certain delta that's positive, I don't like that option anymore. I don't like that option anymore. And... Therefore, I'm going to choose to roll a position up. So this case here, which is actually kind of rare, it's kind of rare to roll a position up while it's still at the edge of the tent, but it does happen from time to time. Part of the problem is why we're having trouble controlling our vega is because our call happens to be at like a 46 delta, and that's going to have a lot of uh, positive vega associated with it. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to roll the butterfly. I'm going to put, go back to starting position. We roll it back up to about 20 points under the money, and now we're back in the center of the position here. Go to the eighth. Let's see. Yeah, so the eighth, we have a bit of a volatility relief, which with a 48-point up move, by the way, which probably in the other position probably wouldn't have reacted very well. Um, again, because we had that positive vega, and where our, our call was positioned, where we probably would have got a nice T plus zero line collapse. But here, having our having our 2780s, we end up getting a bit of a pop in it, which is nice. Let me just go to uh, next adjustment. It's August 12th, August 14th. Looks like we are having uh, markets coming back down again, right? So we now we get another 80 point uh, down move here. So just as a point of reference, this is what we went through, okay? We went through this little market crash here and then a pretty substantial bounce, and then we're crashing, we're, you know, we're coming back down, retesting bottoms on the charts. So here we are due for a rollback. We're behind the shorts. So I'm going to roll this back. So you'll be active in this type of environment, but it's not uh, devastating from a profit and loss standpoint like it might be in a lot of other uh, types of strategies. So here is that we'll go to next adjustment here and so now it's august 19th uh, look how far we got outside the tent this time before we really had a problem so here again we're struggling with a vega issue and uh, you know we could try and bring this back to see what type of a response we're getting. It is bringing it down, but it's not going to bring it down enough where 
you know, some cases it will, especially in low implied volatility environments. But in this environment, it's not going to happen. It's not going to bring us to the point where, you know, we're negative, but now we're also 44 delta positive. And we're also at the maximum capital level. So that combination is not going to work for us. So we are going to bring this up into a roll up again, back to starting position, right? It's neutral delta, 20 points behind the market, and 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. We had to reduce down to 70 point wings. Um, you know, our call's getting fairly high delta here. It's up at 74. And this is our position here. If we move forward, I think we had to get, we got kicked back into a rollback because the market came down. Yeah, market came down. We ended up getting kicked back into a, a, a mini rollback here. And like I said, things aren't usually this active, but certainly in you know, market crash, very high volatility environments, we do get active. Finally, apply volatility is coming into play, and we're getting a little bit of profit coming out of here. And... Right, we get a 72-point move out of nowhere in the marketplace. We end up having to uh, go back to the back end of the tent. We end up having to roll back. So it's just the same. It, it, you know, we're just we're just following this process along, and we basically stay in it unless we hit a maximum loss, which we don't do. And we get out when October, when November here is 77 days expiration, which is in a couple of trading days. Let me just go to next adjustment here. All right, so we ended up closing this on a Thursday, a day early, and this is a rule that we have. We don't want to do a roll in a position. This is our October position, by the way. That's a different position. Let's go back to September. See why it was closed. Basically, we're in a position here where we're up $3,600 on $35,000 plan capital, which is good, right? That's a little over 10%. We have, um, but we have positive Vega. We're not going to be able to correct it by rolling in the upper longs. So that being the case. We don't, we don't roll a position, like I said, within three days to exit, and it's scheduled to exit the following day. So that the trade, so the trade basically comes off for, uh, for our profit number. So that is what the 22 is like. And then the 17 is going to be our bullish trade. And I believe it's going to go through a market crash, but let's uh, let's see. We're looking at October 17. Or October 17. That that means we're going to do that when October 77 days expiration. We have another. That's going to be entered maybe back in here. So let's look at cancel. And these trades overlap, right? So you're going to have two going at the same time, um, much of the time. Let me go here. Let me go into October. So this is our October position. This is a bullish bias strategy. That being the case, it's always positive delta. That said, we do limit the amount of downside risk it's going to take. Sometimes this also starts with a 6440 broken wing butterfly. Sometimes it's going to be entered slightly negative. Uh, actually, it won't be entered slightly negative delta. It's always uh, altered so that it's slightly positive on entry. It's generally not anywhere near this positive delta. And again, that has to do with the implied volatility skew. Usually it's relatively flat. It's, it's just slightly more positive than zero. Um, if we hit certain limits with our downside risk based on projections with a 100-point move, then um, in that case, we're going to be put protected. Here, we don't have that because uh, with a 100-point move, we allow a $10,000 drawdown. Uh, here, it's only $2,500. So there's really no issue there. There's, uh, there's nothing to do. If we go to the next day, although put protection this time would have been beneficial, uh, if we go to the next day, we get a 90-point down move out of the gate. And that brings us down near our maximum loss number. Now, this is rolled back. This put us right through the backside of this. This is rolled back if we're under the short strikes. Again, all these strategies we're checking once a day. We're not washing them during the day. Uh, you know, so here by the end of the day, we're down near our maximum loss number. 
but we are not so close to it where we wouldn't be able to reasonably make some sort of a shift here. So we're going to take this and we're going to roll back to, uh, again, 20 points down uh, under the market. And we're going to recheck our downside risk with another 100 points. And we're still reasonable, like a $5,000 loss, less than a $5,000 loss. So wouldn't do anything as far as that goes. From here, the following days, things lighten up uh, fairly quickly. You know, we're staying down or drawing down money. But here's the great thing that I like about this strategy is if you get a down move and you don't get stopped out, you don't lose when the market goes back up. So a lot of other strategies, what's going to happen is you're going to get drawn down here. You're going to do your rollback. You're going to flatten your T plus zero line. And then when the market does what it usually does and it takes off the other way, a lot of times you're going to end up in a loss. And that simply doesn't happen with this one. Very rarely would that ever happen with this. So and here's what we have uh, in the coming days. And we'll just model. And I don't know. Okay, so now we're pulling back again. Let me just see if there's another adjustment in this. Uh, there is. So this goes all the way. Remember, we started, what, like August 3rd or August 2nd or something like that. We're all the way to uh, the 19th of September, and the market's just finally come back. So just so you know, these trades are, are trades that we cover in our options training for income webinars on Monday mornings for our members, and we make decisions on them. And if we make the wrong decision by accident, which happens from time to time, and nobody in the membership catches it, then we'll have uh, mistakes, which is fine because that happens in live trading, right? That's part of live trading. So here, we're, we're negative delta. So to correct our negative delta, we're going to roll back some of these uh, 2860s. In this case, we used a five point, which was an error, but we will, we will run with it. And we come back. And I don't believe this, I don't believe there's really any other adjustments here. Yeah, that closes the position. So the position would have closed out, let me ignore trades. Position would have closed out here at Let's see, that's our November. We want to look at our October. October position would have closed out here at about a $2,500 profit, which is uh, that's about seven, I guess, seven uh, point something percent of a $35,000. And, you know, and that's what that trade essentially looks like. So we have something that's bullish. We have something that's uh, neutral and designed for choppy uh, markets. We have something that's neutral, and we have something that's a little bit more bearish and designed for choppy markets. We use these three strategies to help teach people what works well when, and there's very specific differences between the strategies that create different dynamics within the trade and work differently in different market environments. And I think that, and I do this because we believe that understanding these concepts is going to be crucial when you start doing your live trading and you start trying to make decisions based on, you know, more intelligent decisions than, than maybe following a set of rules. And, uh, but, but, you know, keeping in mind that the program itself is not about the trades. You could really uh, take any three different trades that have different characteristics and, and put these observations together and then figure out and learn when to best utilize them and, uh, and things like that. The more important aspects of the program, you know, come in with the implied volatility analysis and then understanding what to do in, in the technical analysis and the way everything interacts with each, with each other in the, in the analytical software deficiencies and then putting those together in a way where you can make uh, better decisions and get more consistent income through your trading. So that's basically a, a, a very quick overview of our 20 plus hour uh, X4 program. And I don't know if there's any questions or anything, Tom, but yeah, there are a couple. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, so Marcus says, John, you don't have to erase and write in modeling. You can just drag, grab and drag a leg from cell to cell. So maybe that'll help you use O and E. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, and he says, um, let's see, all three positions you showed are bullish biased. What hedges do you use? And then the other one is, do you mind discussing trades you showed on open forums 
using only the info you presented here, or do you treat them as proprietary and don't allow to talk about them outside your company? We will break these down one at a time. You know, as far as any hedging uh, that we use, we we are not trying to win all the time. Not that hedging works in winning all the time, by the way. Uh, the hedging activity within this strategy uh, comes into play when the limits on the trade are exceeded. So, in other words, when we have you know a, a maximum drawdown, a certain drawdown amount with a certain amount of down move in the SPX, or we have hit a certain delta limits in some of the trades, and the hedging activities in the trading strategies themselves are limited to puts. Within the program, we talk about our you know the alternative trading strategies that some other people are using, and the dangers and the benefits of doing so, and when to do them, and when maybe not to do them. You know, we talk about the ratio spreads and the reverse, um, the reverse uh, or short diagonals and stuff like that that some people are using nowadays, or short ratio diagonals that people are using uh, nowadays in some of these, uh, in some of their programs. And uh, you know, we, like I said, we give you some good information on that if somebody wants to use those. Uh, although generally, I wouldn't recommend using them. And as far as explaining. I, I am pretty much an open book with pretty much everything. Like in our membership, like we have, for example, we have programs with our membership and a lot of people don't have the programs, but they're following along Monday morning. I mean, they can ask any question and I'll certainly put it out there. And the same thing goes for the public presentations. You know, we're here to help traders and I, I'm not all worried about somebody finding out my rules or something like that because the reality is the rules to the trades themselves, they really, they're almost meaningless because ultimately your success as a trader is going to be in making good decisions and we're here to show you how to make uh, good decisions. So, so yeah. So fire away if you have any questions. On uh, there were two more. Um, well, Bob Hub asks, uh, "Will you show us your historic back test the results for these strategies?" I don't have them prepared, but I'm not sure what you would like to know. Each one of these strategies from uh, 2008, or, or yeah, well, 2008 we didn't have have that good of data, but from the 2008 region until today. They all perform very similar to what an M3 is. And, and what that would be is an average of about 56% trade for trade. And if you, if you incorporate the, the fact you have to overlap trades, you'd have to cut that in half. So they run in the high 20s. With the 14 being the lowest, it's going to be closer to like 24, 25. The 17 is going to be up in the 26, 27. The 22 is going to be, you know, up closer to closer to that 30 in the long term. That's what they're going to be. From year to year, they're going to shift depending on the environment. You get a year like this year for a singular strategy, which we can kind of talk about, right? For for and I think most of you probably experience these this in most strategies. Most strategies this year, most rule based strategies went through periods of, of good times and then a lot of periods of bad times. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because, and the same thing a little bit in 2017 too, because we had very, very variable market conditions. So, you know, trades that were bullish, they did really good when the market was bullish, but they got hammered because we had periods of time when the market was very, very bearish. Trades that were bearish bias, you know, they, they did they did okay when the market was coming down, but, you know, they got hammered when the market went up because we had these incredible up runs in the market. And then, of course, if you're neutral, you kind of got hammered in both directions and you only did well when things were kind of in the middle. And it's the same thing with these trades if we, if we take a look at what happened this year, right? So if we go to version 14, for example, now this is essentially flat for the year. I'm not surprised by that. Like I said, we had these extreme down moves. We had the extreme up moves. It's a neutral trade. So it's bias neutral. So in our neutral months, it did pretty much okay. In the really severe months, it got beat down, right? So you're looking at a fairly flat return for the year. Uh, and you're going to, again, with a lot of strategies, you're going to get that. With the 17, we're up about 11% for the year. But again, we went through our trials and tribulations during the year because then the periods of time where it was very bearish and we got hammered to the downside. Now, the 22 generally reacts fairly well in these conditions, so that trade we, we can expect to do, to do the best for the year. So here, 
uh, what we're doing here is you know, we're 10% up in January. Uh, February is flat, and we had a lot of flat months kind of in the middle. These are kind of break-evens. We had a, a pretty good loss in July, a minor loss in August, but then, you know, now the market straightened out a little bit. We're kicking butt here in September, October, November. We had a 22.7. We had a 12.1. We had a 10.3. December is looking really good, like it's going to be a high yield. So we're probably going to be in the 60% range for the year this year with a 22. You know, the, you know cut, cutting it down to 30 if you start accounting for account overlaps. So we do have that. But what we're trying to do is we're not, you know, the, the problem is a lot of the traders have this notion they're going to have one trade and they just want it to work all the time um, and, and be, win consistently. And that's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. And the way to deal with that is, again, to understand the trades, when they're going to do well, when they're going to do poorly, understand the market and volatility and how your analytical software works, and then place them together. Like in the in our pro membership, we, we use these trades, and we use them subjectively. We have a set of trades we use in the SPX, which are the which are the 3x4 trades, and then we have a set of trades we use in the Russell, which is an M3, bearish butterfully, and M3.4U strategy that we have. So this is what we've been doing, right? If you want consistency, we, you know, we're, we're applying this to this. And then, you know, if you go trade for trade, we're up 70, we have 68 plus 12, you know, we're up 70, 80% for the year in the SPX trade for trade. And we're up you know, about almost 70% in the Russell trade for trade. But we're not doing, applying the same set of rules uh, to every situation. Right, we're still in high probability income trades, but we're making more intelligent decisions within those strategies. And that's the way that these are intended to work. So while any of these individual strategies may be up or down for the year, if we want to get more consistency and make smarter decisions, then we need to start to alter our approach depending on the market, especially a year like this when we have you know, such variable uh, conditions in the marketplace. Right. And that doesn't mean some trades haven't done spectacularly well, right? So our rock trade, for example, is up 108% this year. This does not overlap. It's up a real 108% this year. That's not unusual for the rock trade, by the way. But keep in mind, the rock trade is a shorter term, high game of trade that automatically adjusts to market conditions. In other words, it's going to be traded. Um, it's rule-based, but it's also traded very differently depending on where the market goes. And, you know, something like the Super Bowl also does well this year. That's up 367%, and all the trades are closed for the year. Of course, the, if you, you know the Super Bowl, you, you basically you're betting the whole nut on, on what you have, so you can take 100% loss. So you can't trade it with a full-size account. Right? So this is a different way of trading, but it's also a very effective way of trading. But when you trade this way, you can only trade like one-tenth of the normal size you'd normally trade at. So if you cut that back, it's really, you know, it's 367, it's really big, but it's really more like a 36% type of return on account level. But I love this trade because it's so easy to do. You don't have to worry about the loss or exceeding your, your loss limits. So there's a lot of different ways that you can trade and take advantage of the marketplace here. But you're going to be most consistent if you do something like this and you start altering your approaches and stuff like that. John, we're about out of time, but there were a couple of questions. Maybe quickly, uh, what the difference sure. between the X4 and the M21? A couple of people ask that. Right. So M21 is similar in concept. In other words, in the M21, we're taking the M3, the bearish butterfly, the rock trade. We are looking at the marketplace and we're analyzing that and we're putting a trade plan together for a given month. Uh, same concept on the X4, but in the M21, we're dealing with short-term high gamma trades where it's more important to be uh, right with your decisions. And a lot of, uh, especially income, quote-unquote income traders who tend to be more conservative, they don't like to take that kind of trading and they don't like being that active with their trading. They usually like to be more laid back. So with the X4, we still have three different strategies that we're using, and we're still doing the same thing or the same concept, but we're doing it in a much more laid-back, conservative manner. So we're keeping our trades away from expiration. They're wide positions, and pretty much, for the most part, they're, you know, if you go into what we're doing with the pro membership here, the trades aren't very active. A lot of times, we'll only touch them once in a month or not even that often. So, I mean, the returns are lower, generally much lower as a result, but they're very good. And like I said, it goes more in line with your typical, more conservative, market-neutral uh, trader.
Okay. Um, and plus, the information in the X4 programs updated quite a bit. I think we did the M21 program back in 2000. 12, if I remember right, 2013, it was a while something ago. like that. Yeah. yeah, it was a long time. It was like it was like six or seven years ago. So this program was done in 2017. I've learned a lot in, the, in that period of time. So so we so we do apply new knowledge, as they say. All right, John. Well, I've got to run, so uh, we need to end it here. But uh, thanks so much Sounds for good. coming on, and uh, everybody seemed to enjoy it. I'm sure we'll have you back on in the future. And um, if you give me some, I'll, I'll put some links to uh, the X4 with the recording. So. Yeah, yeah, great. And, you know, lockinyoursuccess.com, come over to the website, ask questions uh, with what we have. We do a lot of stuff for free to the public, too. So, Great. All well, right. Thanks again, John, and uh, greetings to Sherry. And, uh, and yeah, thanks again for coming on and look forward to having you in the future. You're welcome. Have fun in Colorado this winter. Yeah, thanks. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah, bye. We'll see you, John. Bye-bye.